Hello everyone, it's me Goose. How you doing? So today was supposed to be a video for something else and I just found out that E3 is happening literally today. I mean, it's not actually happening today, but EA is, is starting their live stream in about an hour, actually, from the time of this recording. And I, I figured, you know what? Since I'm coming back to YouTube and, you know, I'm actually coming back to make content every single day like I did back a few months ago, I figured, hey, why not start here with EA's and E3's bullshit? Uh, I mean, it hasn't started yet, so I don't have anything to say about it, but hey, E3 is just around the corner, and holy shit, is there almost literally nothing to, like, expect. Uh, so apparently, Bethesda is doing their own stream. They got Fallout 4 VR and Doom VR and Quake Champions, and it's like, okay, whatever. Nintendo, I don't know what the fuck they're doing. They got Mario, Splatoon 2, and ARMS, and, you know, there's not... Again, I don't know what the fuck is happening. Xbox, they got Scorpio. <laughs> That's about it. I, I don't know. Like, almost everyone has nothing. Like, almost nothing. Maybe, I mean, like, I'm anticipating some surprises here and there, absolutely, especially with uh, Nintendo, because I'm sure they got something in the woodworks, right? They're, they're Nintendo. They just came out with a new console. They gotta have some new shit to show us, right? And there's the whole Rabbids thing that they're probably gonna announce, and it's gonna be so shit. But, whatever. I mean, Sony, so far, it looks like the strongest competitor out of everyone. They got a ton of games, you know, God of War, the new God of War game. Uh, they got that Last of Us 2. They got that new Uncharted game. Uh, they got that sh uh, Detroit game. I almost said Chicago. They got that Detroit game. And they got a ton of fucking games that's coming out of their console. Everyone else is, like, kind of scatterbrained right now. So it's it's unknown what exactly they'll be announcing. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But honestly, I don't know about you guys, but lately, E3s have just been kind of meh to me. I mean, the only reason I only watch some of these uh, some of these E3 streams is because I think they're kind of cringy and funny <laughs> to watch, and it's really fun to watch them with friends. Let me tell you that, especially people who are into gaming as you are, because you get to see some really wacky, cringy shit. And I know people are already getting their their editing fingers on the draw right now. They're they're <laughs> ready to extract clips from every single coverage and uh, rather every single. Uh, live stream and bring it to their video crobe cat. I'm sure he's gonna do some shit uh, This everybody's gonna do some crazy shit this year. And it's gonna be great especially with Ubisoft I'm fucking rabbits man. I can't get over that But yeah, I, I mean like lately e3 has just been kind of shit I don't know. I don't know like especially last year I think the biggest disappointment for me from last year was Nintendo. What did the what the fuck did they have? They had, uh, what was it, um, Mario? No, it wasn't even Mario. It was uh, Breath of the Wild, which is cool. And then they had the new Pokemon game. And that was their live stream. That was their big fucking live stream. It, it was like shit. It was pretty garbage. And maybe they had a few 3DS games announced. But we all thought the Nintendo Switch was going to make its big debut at E3. But nowadays, it just seems like Nintendo doesn't like E3. That's what I feel anyways. They, I feel like they're not marketing to E3 anymore. They're not trying to build games just so they could announce them at E3. I think they're just kind of pulling away from that shit and making their own videos or their uh, their own announcements in, the spare, in their spare time. Just so they could be like, hey, nothing is going on this month, but we're going on. Let me show you this and this and the Nintendo Switch and Suda51's mic sh is, is shit and garbage. And it was awesome. It's, but yeah, I don't know. Nintendo Switch. I, I'm, you know what I'm hoping? <clears throat> now that I mentioned Suda51, I'm hoping for No More Heroes 3. They announced it back in January when they announced the Switch. And I am super fucking excited for whatever Suda51 has in store for Travis Touchdown. I love that fucking game. That is the game that made me want to be a writer. And I am prepared for whatever he has to announce, if anything at all. I mean, Death Stranding isn't even coming, so I can't be excited for that. But, hey, maybe? I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll fucking see. Uh, 
but I don't know. There's no real discussion here. It's just this seems like a very flaccid, shitty E3. <laughs> I don't know. It's not shitty. It's just what is there to expect? I We're either going to get a big basket of surprises or just a big empty basket of nothing or things that we just expected. I mean, nobody expected the rabbits thing. I keep mentioning that. If you don't know what it is, there's this uh, leaked image of like rabbits and Mario teaming up to be Mega Man and it's so weird it's so bizarre and I've seen some people speculate that it's not even a presentation kind of thing it was supposed to be like a slideshow like a pitch kind of thing to show at Nintendo because there's a lot of spelling errors there are a few things that I'm sure Nintendo would never allow in in that picture but I don't know. It, I don't care about it. I don't know. We'll, we'll fucking see. I'm excited, but also worried because I don't know what to expect from this E3. And god damn, I am ooh, confused and conflicted. Hey, here's one thing. I hope Half-Life 3 is announced. We always say it every single E3. It never happens. It's always great to hope. I, I You know what? If Half-Life 3 is ever announced, I doubt it's ever going to be at E3. Pretty sure it's just going to be a Nintendo thing where uh, Gabe Newell's going to announce it in his spare time, whenever the fuck he wants to, really, because they're they're Steam. They they don't even care about E3. They're just computer games and shit. So, oh, we'll see. I just wanted to get that out of the way because, oh man, I am worried about E3. It, I, I want to see the cringe. I want to see the cringe compilations that come out of this fucking thing. But as it is right now. Uh, like for the positives i don't know what to expect but hey today is your hashtag cues so let's go ahead and ask some questions none of them are e3 related mostly because i'm sure you guys forgot that e3 was around the corner too but hey i don't mind answering your questions anyways so let's get started the first question is by neil toledo you asked, do you think the rise of Let's Plays have influenced the number of single-player games being released, developed, and on their sales? Uh, hmm. I don't think so. I think a lot of people can make... Well, okay. Let's Plays can be done with whatever fucking game you want. Uh, I, I think more so it's influenced couch co-op games. You know, party games and such. Games that don't even try to have online multiplayer and instead want to be more... Uh, uh, single screen multiplayer, you know, couch co-op, like I said. Uh, and those kinds of games always make all kinds of fucking headlines or headlines, but like they make it to the front page, the trending page every single time. PewDiePie plays it with his friends. Markiplier plays it with his friend Jacksepticeye, you know, the big three guys play it with their friends and, and whatever other Let's Players uh, make sure that they play them together and they make this fucking video that gets millions of views because what they're playing is wacky and insane and content worthy i suppose so i don't think maybe it does I, I don't think so i do think let's plays influence game development as a whole just for indie gamers i i i think maybe you can make that argument with a few companies because they do give out copies to certain big youtubers like i said pewdiepie markiplier jacksepticeye all those guys uh w when they give them those copies and they you know make a video out of them they get a ton of fucking views and that's just not it's not free advertisement because i'm sure they pay them but that is some advertisement as advertisement <laughs> with immediate results you know you show them having fun they're they're having a ton of fun they're laughing and whatever and that sort of marketing scheme has definitely influenced the way we make games. We want to make them fast. We want to make them entertaining and flashy. And when we look at the opposite side of the spectrum with indie games, indie game uh, developers seem to only make them for Let's Plays. You know, they make them wacky and weird and, and dumb and stupid. And, you know, it, I'm not blaming Duck Game for anything, but there have been a lot of Duck Game copies lately that are trying to emulate that that weirdness that uh, that game that Adult Swim produced, you know, and Adult Swim, you know, say what you will about their programming block. I know a lot of people aren't fans of them, and sometimes they come out with a Rick and Morty or a Samurai Jack, but they do make some very interesting games that almost seems like they're custom made for Let's players, 
but it doesn't seem like they're forcing their way into the Let's Play community. It seems like they know what they're doing over at Adult Swim. And with games like Duck Game, they just, they captured everything, the essence of Let's Play. Something weird, frantic, something you can play with your friends. It's, it's fun. It's pretty brilliant actually so going back to your question do i think it's influence uh let's plays do i think they've influenced single player games no not really with big big companies i i think they market them that way so you know let's players can play them but i i don't think they've influenced big companies indie companies indie indie devs absolutely oh absolutely you know how many people just make shitty games just for the sake of being played for some let's play channel that doesn't know any better Oh my god, there are a ton of people like that. Absolutely a ton. Everybody thinks they're a comedian nowadays with their game development stuff, but it, it's it's pretty obvious they're going after the Let's Play stuff. So, thank you for that question. Fee, you asked, do you like cyberpunk or solar punk? So your question is actually very interesting because I've never heard of solar punk ever when i actually looked it up i went down a rabbit hole of different kinds of solar punk thing and it looks pretty cool man it, i've never heard of that before but it looks pretty rad i've never heard of this this is so weird solar punk that's that's weird but uh i if i have to answer your question seriously cyberpunk is more into what i like uh, I'm, you know, the thing about cyberpunk is that it's so flexible. I, I'm not familiar with solar punk. I'm sure if I am familiarized with the, the, the genre or the theme, then I probably have more to say about that. But with cyberpunk, I like when technology is fucking extravagant to the point of it's just fantasy with robots. You know, I love it when, when people are just so creative with robot shit cybernetic shit whatever kind of shit i love that i don't know why it just robots with magic fascinates me so much and i'm going through a weird deja vu did i say this before have i said this before i swear i think i've said this before that's weird I, i'm having like a weird deja vu moment right now but hey anyways cyberpunk yeah i i don't know and you know <laughs> i know this is weird but I've been going through a kind of cyberpunk resurgence because I've been listening to some dubstep and boy howdy, I kind of like cyberpunk just because I like the music of dubstep. I, I know a lot of people think dubstep is trash, but I was listening to that syndicate theme by Skrillex. Fucking rad. That song is rad as fuck. Um, but I don't know. Cyberpunks, it, it just seems cooler. Uh, solar solar punk like I said never heard of that, but that is a concept. I'm very interested in But I would rather stick to what I know and say cyberpunk. So there you go. Here's a quick one This question is by Lalo 7578 OMG goose. Can we have your old channel? No, you can look for it I think a lot of, I, I there should be a few people that know my old channel. I'm not gonna say it y'all can find that on your own I'm not gonna find it call it out last but not least honey fox you asked don't know if you already talked about this but what was the reasoning behind your name i've actually never talked about that ever at all i don't know why I, it, it's kind of weird i've had this channel for oh my god nearly two years in six months it's actually going to be it's no not six months it's gonna, three months it's going to be its two-year anniversary i've never answered that question ever before so here's the reasoning Goose is just my name. That's not, it's not my real name, but it's a shortening of my name, Gustavo. So, Goose, Gustavo, that's, that's just what my cousins called me when I was younger. Still what they call me to this day. It's just my nickname that I grew up with. Uh, and the boost part, uh, I was playing, uh, what, what's that fucking game called? Uh, I was playing Cards Against Humanity, and I needed to come up with a random ass uh, username. And I was kind of tired and I was kind of irritated because it was like, there's so many rules I needed to learn about. It was my first time playing Cards Against Humanity. I was like, oh, God, I, yeah, whatever. And then I was like, oh, you need a username. And I was like, yeah, yeah fucking whatever. Goose Boost. There you go. And that's it. It was just I, I chose Boost because it rhymed with Goose. And I've stuck with that since 2000. 15 14 whenever i made that old channel or whenever i renamed my old channel to goose boost uh that's not channel's name nowadays but that's what it was 
uh, yeah, and then I just stuck with it when I made when I rebooted my my whole YouTube career with this channel, and I stuck with it since. And it's yeah, that's just who I am. Uh, you know, it's funny because I've had like three people. Uh, come up to me, not come up to me personally, but like comment on my videos and be like, you stole my name. And their name is Goose Boost as well. And I'm like, wow, this is way more common than I thought. What the fuck is wrong with people? <laughs> and but yeah, I'm, I'm the as far as I know, I'm the biggest Goose Boost. So, you know, everyone else is a fraud or a faker. So fuck them. And yeah, hey, that's Goose Boost. That's my name. If any, I know some of you are still curious about the bow. Just Oh, it's the first fucking video you should see. If you're not a subscriber, uh, then it should be the very first video you'll see on my front page. If not, just look up why do I wear a green bow. That it should. In fact, let me look that up. Let me see if that's on like YouTube's first. Yeah, exactly. If you look up why do I wear a green bow, that's the first fucking video you'll see. It's my video, so that's the answer to that. I keep getting questions about that. Why is my character a girl? It's not a girl. It's just a boy with a bow. Shut the fuck up. Anyways, thank you all so very much for watching. I will be covering whatever E3 thing I see uh, starting today, I suppose. Uh, I probably won't make a video today. I, I mean, I I'll try to record a video. I'm not sure if I'll be able to post it by tonight. We'll see. I, I hope I can be really fast about that. But... Stick around because I will be talking about E3 and I'll be making videos daily again just so I can get back to the, the groove of making videos again because I've been lazing off, honestly. I've been pretty shitty at it lately. So let's get back to that and I will see you all next time. Thank you all so very much for watching. I love y'all. Goodbye. <laughs>